Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Tyler Reed. I'm the Manufacturing Application Manager here at Go Engineer, and today we're going to be covering a 3D Printing 101 topic, and that is support material. This is not the most glamorous or exciting topic, but it is a key topic in 3D printing. The ability to create support material allows us to fully take advantage of 3D printing technology. As we know, 3D printing is an additive process. We build up layer by layer. You know, different technologies will build in different layer sizes, but at the end of the day, it's always layers. What support material allows us to do is build up layer on top of layers or build up material over top of empty space, essentially. There are many part geometries that would require overhangs, internal cavities, deep holes, channels, voids, etc. that if we didn't have support material to build up a bed for this for these later layers to lay down on, we just wouldn't be able to print this geometry. So support material is a sacrificial material, it's a sacrificial structure. This is an important aspect of 3D printing is always asking yourself how much support material am I going to lay down, but also how am I going to remove it? In some cases, our support material is water soluble. In other cases, we have to break it away. And if we're going to break it away, we're going to need access to that support material. All Stratasys machines will print in support material. Other machines may not print in support material, or they may. A lot of times these will be designated as dual head or dual extruder machines if they have support material. On the FDM side, within the Stratasys lineup, we have different support materials for different model materials. It's important to match them up. On the Polyjet side, which is the other technology we'll be covering today, we have, we have separate support options, but it's really just down to what machine are we printing on and what is our preference. So we'll start with FDM. This is the support material that many of us grown to know and love. FDM is a process that's going to be available on the Stratasys lineup and also a wide variety of hobby level printers that may or may not have support capability. In this image that you're looking at, it's the build tray of one of the newer F370 machines. The black material is our ABS material, it's our model material, and the white material is an SR30 soluble support material water soluble and it's built in areas where there are overhangs. You can see on this RC chassis we have some spots for bearings, wheel bearings, that create a severe overhang. Now we could try to bridge that gap without support material but we would never get an accurate hole with support material by filling it up. We have a nice bed of material to lay down on we have a nice bed to lay down material on. So all of the white material is sacrificial. It will be removed at a later point. On the FDM side, we primarily use water-soluble support. This means it's a hands-free removal. It's very nice. It will typically take an hour to three hours to dissolve away, depending on how much material you have, but it's hands-off. We don't have to worry about it. We use cleaning stations, essentially tanks with heated water and cleaning agents to remove this support. The cleaning agents that we use are called waterworks or ecoworks. Depending on where you live, what state you're in, what your what restrictions you're up against as far as draining some of this uh, material down the down the drain. We have two options. One's a sodium hydroxide base and one is sodium carbonate base solution. Some of the more high performance materials are going to use breakaway supports or what we call BATS, breakaway support structures. Essentially higher performance materials, they're going to be printing in a more stringent environment, higher heat, and our soluble supports just aren't up to the task. So we have corresponding support materials that can withstand that heat. These support materials are generally removed manually using hand tools, things like pliers, picks, 
And we will sometimes supplement this with solvents as well. Something like acetone can embrittle, say, an ultim support and help, help us uh, remove it. I mentioned the cleaning stations. These are heated water tanks with a cleaning agent. On top of the heat, we'll usually add some sort of agitation to the process. This will speed it up, either circulation or ultrasonic agitation. Here's a breakdown of the current FDM materials we print in and the corresponding support materials. So on the soluble support side, you can see we have a lot of our entry level materials, our ABS plastics, the ASA, the different variants of nylon all have a soluble support material. PC ABS. PC polycarbonate is sort of the transition point. It has both a soluble support and a breakaway support option. And then once you get beyond the PC, it's all breakaway support. So the high heat materials like Ultems, PPSF, these are breakaway supports. Now in general, we have the SR20, the SR30 soluble supports. They behave similarly. Uh, the SR30 will dissolve a bit faster and it doesn't expand quite as much. So we prefer the SR30 wherever we can in things like ABSN30 where we have the choice to stick with the SR30. But for the other materials, we don't have a lot of choice. On those breakaway supports, these are the supports that we can embrittle with acetone if needed, but we will be in general breaking them away. For this reason, this sometimes guides us in how we are going to choose a material based on our part geometry. If we're printing a prototype and material is flexible, meaning we could possibly do it in ASA or polycarbonate versus Ultem, uh, we'll probably side with the polycarbonate or the ASA if it has very complex geometry that would be difficult and time consuming to remove the support. Beyond the scope of this webinar, Stratasys does publish a PDF titled FDM Best Practices for Support Removal. It's several pages long. It gives a lot of details covering the bath temperatures, the time to soak the parts, some of the structural or mechanical differences and chemical differences between the soluble support. It also goes through some key support removal steps for, that are material specific like nylon where we can actually affect the mechanical properties of nylon and also polycarbonate by improper support removal in the bath. So I definitely check that out. The easiest way to find this is through a simple Google search. FDM support removal will be the top link as you see there in the screenshot. Or you can email me and I can send it to you directly. On the FDM side, when we're printing in hard thermoplastics, the support material was also a thermoplastic. On the polyjet side, we actually have a different material than our model material. So polyjet, most model materials are acrylic based. And they are rigid or flexible. But the support materials are more wax-like. You can see here in this screenshot, we've got some parts on the J750, we have a chain and a couple timing belts. These are soft, flexible timing belts. The chain is rigid. All of these are fully encased in support material. Uh, we do that when we want a matte finish on our parts. The matte finish increases the accuracy and also provides a constant and consistent surface finish. Particularly on Polyjet, we see evidence of that support and model interface. Wherever support is touching the model, we'll get a matte finish. If we print in gloss, where if faces don't need support, they aren't actually encased in support, then we see a, dis a distinct difference between gloss faces and matte faces. So for that reason, when we need models that have a consistent appearance, consistent aesthetic, and a lot of times we'll choose that matte option and it will, it will increase the amount of support material we use, but it will also create a better part.
So you can see here, these are those parts after the support has been dissolved. In this case, we're using a soluble support material. So we place it in a bath, and once it has dissolved, we get parts that are more flexible, like in this chain. The links of this chain are rigid with clearances of about 10,000 inches between parts. That clearance during the build process was filled with support material, and then it was later dissolved away. So that leaves clearance and allows these parts to move relative to each other. On the PolyJet side, we have two types of support, or really three types of support that are removed two different ways. We have the legacy water jet support removal system. This is a hands-on process. Uh, we are going to be processing each part individually using that water jet system you see pictured on the right. I like to think of it as a sandblaster with an electric pressure washer attached to it. It is hands-on, which means we turn around parts very quickly. You know, they typically take one to five minutes to clean, but it can be destructive. You'll see in a video here, you know, this pressure washer, depending on where you have it set, it can be up to about 1600 PSI. So, you know, if we hold that nozzle close to a fragile part, then we could potentially damage it. In the past, that limited polyjet to certain types of geometries. It, I mean, it just excluded it from us printing very finely detailed parts. The technology itself was capable of printing it, but the support removal process made it impractical. And so with that being an issue, Stratasys developed a soluble support. We call it support 706. It's water soluble, uh, just like the FDM process. This means it's hands-off and non-destructive. It does take a little bit longer, though. It's not going to be five minutes. It's going to be an hour or two. Uh, we use, a again, a heated tank with agitation with a cleaning agent. It's a 2% sodium hydroxide and 1% sodium metasilicate solution. Notice that all of these are either sodium hydroxide, sodium carbonate base. They're all alkaline cleaning agents. Another thing that we have available on the PolyJet support is an optional chemical treatment. Sometimes we will soak the parts in a sodium hydroxide solution for one or two hours. If we're doing this before the support removal, it will soften the support and it will make blasting it easier. You know, maybe we can get away with less pressure. If we are soaking it after the support removal, it's do, we're doing that to help eliminate any sort of residue left on the part from the support material. You know, once the support material is soaked away, we can sometimes feel some residue left on it, and that can interfere with maybe some post-processing post -processing steps like painting the part, uh, molding the part with silicone, or something like uh, chrome plating the part. So what you're going to see here, and hopefully this video doesn't play too choppy online, but we've got the GoPro sitting inside the water jet station. And we're blasting away a, a pretty fragile part, actually. It's a tango part, that's, so it's soft and flexible. It's a model of hair, so we have some hair strands that you guys can see there poking out. I could definitely crush this part and damage it if I wanted to in my hands. Uh, but the goal here is to not damage it and remove the support non-destructively, and that's what we do here. This is sped up a bit. Overall, this was about a four-minute process to clean this part thoroughly. Uh, a lot of that was just having to get into all the nooks and crannies between the hair pieces. Now, this would have been an ideal candidate uh, for the soluble support. Um, but because we printed it on a machine that had the water jet support on it, we we're going to have to water jet it. So you saw a photo a couple slides ago of that water blast station. That's used for the breakaway support on the polyjet side. 
On the soluble support side for both Polyjet and FDM, we have several different tanks available. It just depends on what your capacity is, your printing capacity. You know, if you have just one smaller machine, we can get away with maybe one of the small circulating machines that you see here, or the 1900 BT is a very common ultrasonic tank. If you have larger machines or many smaller machines, then we might want to up the capacity again to something like that 1900 BT. That's probably our most common machine. Um, on the Say you're a Fortis 900 customer, you're now looking at the SST 4030, really large ultrasonic machine, or the XL Plus, the multi-jetting machine. My personal preference is the ultrasonic machines. They work faster than the circulating machines, but they obviously come at a premium price-wise. And that about does it. I told you this is short and sweet. This is 3D printing 101 topic, covering support material. The importance of support material, what role does it play in 3D printing? How necessary is it to take advantage of the full functionality of your printer? The differences between the FDM and the Polyjet support materials. FDM having primarily water-soluble, hands-free removal. On the higher performance materials, we do have the breakaway support. And on the Polyjet side, we have either the water jet or the soluble support material. Um, in general, we are using both sort of hand in hand. And uh, that about covers it. Like I mentioned, Stratasys does have more complete information available, particularly on the FDM side for support removal best practices. I encourage you, if you're researching this topic, to go ahead and download that or shoot me an email, tread at goengineer.com, and I can give it to you. So thanks for joining, guys. This is short and sweet. We'll catch you next month. Thank you. Mm -hmm.